everybody. We are excited in the studio today. My name is Cole Delbeck, and we are here with the cast of Cheer, a new Netflix docuseries following an elite collegiate cheerleading squad. It only premiered a few weeks ago, and it's become a full-blown pop culture phenomenon, inspiring memes, quizzes, and even an SNL parody. <laughs> Watching these incredible athletes transform their minds and bodies over six episodes makes for moving, inspiring, and at times terrifying television. The show is debunking long-held conceptions about cheerleading as we get a window into what it takes to be a champion and just how transformative this sport can be for young people learning about themselves and how they fit into the world around them. So let's hear your best Matt talk and make some noise for Monica, Jerry, Gabby, and Ladarius from Cheer. Yeah. Thank you all so much for being here. It's like sitting across from you guys. I feel like I just made Matt for the first time. <laughs> Dreams are coming true. Um, so I'd love to hear, you know, since this show premiered, how have your lives changed? Because there's been this huge outpouring of support that's gone beyond the very sort of insular cheerleading community. So can you give us a bit of an update about where you guys are now? Well, um, we obviously did not expect this. We thought we were just filming a little documentary about cheerleading and that it would be, you know, maybe popular in the cheer community. So as each day's gone by, we've just kind of been blown away, and we're just kind of learning as we go because this is, you know, uncharted territory for us. Um, but, you know, we've done a, we've been kind of doing a lot of appearances and interviews and stuff and then also trying to squeeze in practice at the same time. So we've been really, really busy and, you know, not slept much, but we're, we're pushing. We're pushing. Well, you see, you're all pretty tired, I imagine. <laughs> yes, very. Uh, I think for me, like, yeah, the show, we weren't expecting it to blow up the way it did. And honestly, it's so heartwarming to see that we can touch lives the way that we have in the past only like two or three weeks. It really is so inspiring to us to see that we can change people's lives for the better. What about you, Jerry? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I'm still at Navarro, so I'm happy to tell you guys that. Um, and again, like so much love and support from so many different types of people and so many people that relate to our stories that it really makes us feel amazing that we're touching people's lives each day at a time. I'm seeing you're out here doing cameos. I want one soon. <laughs> oh, you want one? I got you. I got you. Okay, you I'm good. <laughs> Ladarius? Um, my biggest thing is that... Uh, I feel like the getting to other people and letting them know that we still are human and we go through things just like they go through things and that we can be there for them just like they can be there for us is the biggest thing for me and what has came out of this entire documentary. It just, make, like Gabby said, it's heartwarming to know that you're not alone and that there are people out there that do love you even if you don't even know them. I mean, the reach this show has is incredible, and I feel like you know you really made it when there's a BuzzFeed quiz about which tier person you are. And I want to be totally transparent. I got Morgan. Um, <laughs> did you go on to take this? Did you get yourselves? I got myself. You got yourself? Yeah, I got myself, too. Have you done it, Jerry? I got Gabby. <laughs> Monica, have you seen I, this? I saw it, but I did not take it. Okay, we have to do that for the show. <laughs> You know, so there was a camera crew following you guys around for months, I know. Um, and I'm sort of curious, did you know that your stories were going to be at the forefront of the documentary? Or was it a case of, like, you're watching this and you're like, oh, I'm one of the stars of this thing. Did they give you a heads up at all? We kind of were like, we didn't really know. Honestly, they just, they filmed a lot. And then we saw it. And the first time we saw it was when it was released. And we were all like oh, wow, like, we were in it a lot. <laughs> and uh, I think each person played a very important role in the docuseries, and we couldn't have done it without every single person. So. Yes, I agree. Um, everybody played an important role. Um, we didn't know who was going to be, like, the quote-unquote star because it was so much filming they did, so we were just in awe when we first saw it. So we were just so happy that everything happened the way it happened. I thought it was really fun. <laughs> I knew I knew that we were all like being videoed and everything and I was like these are going to be me personally I had I had to like map talk myself into getting film cuz I just would I really just didn't want to like put myself out there in the forefront but I didn't I didn't realize how much it really was going to be focused on the people that it was focused on and I learned some new things that I didn't even know about my peers that I literally learned from the show so it was a really good thing yeah, I imagine this it sort of made you stronger, more of a connective unit, this whole experience. 
Well, yeah. I think we're 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 really connected already because we spend so much time together. We, on top of com- competition, we have a lot of games and we practice a lot. So we're already like a really really big family. And um, the show when it came out, just getting even that more in depth with everyone, it just even made it tighter. But but it, before that, it was already a really really big family. Did you guys feel like you were accurately portrayed? I was just sort of reading this thing with Lexi, and she was saying that the scene at the end with her at the rave was actually filmed sort of prior to after Daytona as a way to sort of like illustrate where she was at that time. Uh, were there any moments when you were watching back where you were a bit surprised? You're like, oh, that's not exactly how I remember that. Did they stick out for you? Well. <laughs> Please, the tea. Let's do it. So there was a part where Jerry had came into my spot, and it was showing that I was like, it looked as if I was mad or I was bitter. And uh, I want you to finish it, Jerry. Let, let the girls know how I really was. Okay. Okay. Because so so you know. when it happened, when it, <laughs> when it happened, um. He was on the side cheering me on, <laughs> screaming for me. So <laughs> they didn't show that side, but he was actually very encouraging and very uplifting. Just Ladarius being, being Ladarius. Right, Ladarius being Ladarius. <laughs> was. He was an amazing friend for that. Yes. I would never be bitter over my girl. It's right. my girl. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Gabby? Were there any moments that you sort of remember differently after seeing the show? Uh, I think the biggest thing I've seen is like, you know, the whole thing about my parents, how like they're horrible and this and that. And honestly, I mean, my parents are, no family is perfect, but I definitely think that the way it was, uh, you know, they didn't see the things before the conversations, like that led up to the conversation that they had in the film. And after like watching it, I just felt like we, I mean, it made us stronger as a family overall. And I'm very thankful because we, you know, when you're in a situation, you can't see until you step out and you actually, like, see it. So I'm very, very thankful, and I feel like my family, like, yeah, we're never perfect, and I don't think any family is perfect. And we've always been the type to just say it like it is. We don't sugarcoat anything, and uh, that's just always how we've been. But, yeah, like I said, no family's perfect, and I think it the show made us actually stronger and came together a lot more, so. I'm so happy to hear that. You know, so many of these, the testimonials that we see are so emotional and raw, and it was making me think, like, uh, you guys are all sort of Gen Z, and you've grown up around social media, you understand what it means to share things publicly around cameras, even if it's just your iPhone, and Gabby, I know you, of course, came into the show with a bit of a following, and I was wondering, did that sort of help the filmmaking process? Because I know Instagram is a huge part of this sort of cheerleading phenomenon, especially nowadays. So did that sort of make things a bit easier, talking to the camera in that way? Uh, I feel like it was pretty easy, and also the cast was, they were never like, hey, you should say this, or hey, you should do this. Like, it was very natural. It was very, like, they we didn't know that they were there half the time. It was kind of just like we were living in the moment and they just happened to capture each thing that we did. And they, they became like family. Like, with, you know, we got, it was a couple of days to kind of get used to it, but then we didn't really know they were there just because we were so focused on what we were doing. But they became our biggest cheerleaders and just got emotionally invested and cried when we did our first show off. It was... It was sad when they left because we felt like they were our family. They were so close to us. And that, you know, that's why I think we're so close. They they were with us as for, you know, 12 hours a day. And that's just how how much time we spend together. And you just get so connected to each other. Is there, you know, this filming lasted so long. And, of course, we're condensing it to a six-part uh, miniseries. What didn't we see that the cameras captured or maybe that they even didn't that you guys think is important to know about Navarro about cheer culture? Um, I'll say this um, just based on a few of the um, kind of negative things that we've heard. You know, you saw six six hours worth of four months of, of practice. And so you did see on the show a lot of our falls and stuff. And so it maybe it looked like we were unsafe or whatever, but we actually spent a lot of time doing progressions and doing easier things before we go to the harder things. And then like a big pyramid, we'll learn one part, each section separately until we have it consistent enough to put it all together. We have a lot of spots 
The kids do get to sit out when they're hurt. Uh, We have trainers that take care of them. They have um, treatment plans. If they have to be sent to a doctor, we have a doctor staff that we send them to. So they are cared for quite well. And um, so (laughs) even though it looked like that's all we did was drop people, I mean, those were the... (laughs) That, I mean, yeah. that does happen, but um, we you didn't see the 1,000 times that we did it right and and uh, the times that the kids were sitting out because of an injury or just to heal properly. So, you know, you just, they only had six hours to put it in. And, of course, they want to, you know, you're going to see us fall. But um, we definitely are safe, and it is a top priority, and... I'm not crazy. <laughs> Monica, I don't even know you, and I trust you with my life, like, wholeheartedly. Like, please take over. Make all the decisions for me. What, what did you guys think watching back? Like, did you feel like the type of the things in practice were misrepresented a bit, with, like those successive concussions in that, in that one area where when Sherbs fell? And can I say one thing? Please. Um, those concussions didn't happen at Navarro. All those concussions <laughs> didn't happen at Navarro. So uh, it, when Allie said she had five concussions, she... she that didn't happen in Avero, so that might have been a little. Did did y'all think? Did it come across that way? Yeah, I, I thought that they had happened. Yeah. No, 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 no. These are people who've cheered since they were little, so they've had injuries along the way. But that did not happen. Five concussions at Navarro did not happen. <laughs> so On the let's set the record straight. That did not happen at Navarro. But go ahead. Um, <laughs> no, we can move on. You know, um, something that I was so drawn to about this show was that. You know, as a gay kid growing up and being closeted, sports always really felt like a really intimidating and a welcoming space for me. And something about this show really felt like wish fulfillment in the sense of like, there were so many different types of men being together, working together in an athletic space, a traditionally masculine space, but also supporting and loving each other. Um, And it seems really specific to cheerleading. Uh, And it was, yeah, it was just so moving to me. So I'd love to hear from both of you, Jerry and Ladarius. Is that what sort of drew you to uh, cheerleading, a space where you could, be yourself, be with other people like yourself? Absolutely, absolutely. I would say ever since I joined Truly, I always had a sense of welcome, welcomeness, and I was always around people that supported me. So that's what really kept me in cheer and wanted me to always keep doing it. And so over the years, I've just felt more and more welcomed and more and more free to be who I wanted to be through cheer. So I think that's why I'm attracted to cheer, to cheer for so much and why I love it so much. What about you, Lirius? Um, With me, I feel like it is such a good feeling knowing that you are around other men that are just like you, that there's levels to this, but, I mean, they're just like you, and y'all all all share such a vibrant light. And we have coaches like Monica who allow you to do that, well, within your borders, but (laughs) allow you to do that. And it just, like, it feels so good to be able to be as extra as you want, as long as you're in a good way. And to be as fun, like there's like sometimes we kind of practice with um, crop tops on and wigs on and she's, she's just be like, well, yeah, it's yeah. just like, it's so like, you just feel free. Like you find you like, it's like your safe, your safe place. Yes. And I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Monica, you really fostered an incredible environment for these young people. And, and it's so beautiful to watch. And I think so many people growing up wish that they had a person like you in their lives to, yeah, to make them feel safe. So, I mean, so much so congrats to you. It's really wonderful. Thank you, thank you. I mean, like I said, they're like my kids, and I just want to protect them. And I want them to let, be proud of who they are and love themselves. And I think a lot of times if they're insecure and they or doubt themselves because of the way other people make them feel, that's just not the life that they need. And I want to make sure they feel loved and protected and, most importantly, love themselves. You know, Jerry and Ladarius, your friendship was such an anchor to the show for me, and I loved your interactions, and I, and I love, Jerry, how you said that you're really inspired by Ladarius' confidence, and that Ladarius, you also benefit from sort of Jerry's incredible optimism and his spirit, and, I, and I'd love to know how your friendship has evolved since then, um, how you guys have stayed close uh, since the show wrapped. When I met Jerry, the first day we met, I told him he was going to be my best friend, like, we literally walked in, because this is when we were meeting the, the team, like all of us together. He was walking from one way, I was walking, and he was like saying something, and he was just like being loud. And I looked at him, and I was like, you're going to be my best friend. And I gave him a hug, and we've been best friends ever since that day before we were practicing for camp. When we met in, um, we all met together, and we've been friends ever since that. That was in like 2017. Oof. Yes. <clears throat> This is definitely a best friend. Oh, ride or die type. You already know. <laughs> Very ride or die. Very that. We've been through so much together. You know, friends always have fights, but 
Our fights, our fights are different. Our fights are different. Um, back up. <laughs> but we just we love each other at the end of the day, and we all we will always have each other's back. Have any of the bad girls club reached out to you? Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. So one of them reached out. Okay, so Tanisha has commented back to one of my um, oh my comments God. before, and then the Claremont twins they have um, liked um, one of my tweets. Megan liked one of my Megan tweets. Megan liked. Yeah. Oh my God. Like Bree, she she was me and her were DMing each other, and we said we we're gonna be friends, and she was like, okay, and that's fine. So we're, I I got a couple of the bad girls. You're in. I want a crossover. <laughs> the one we deserve. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, I need to get on that. Yes. I got you. I got you. I'd love to know how sort of this year's team is is shaping up, um, and how maybe the show has impacted what's going on. Because I imagine the the newfound sense of fame. Would would change a bit, and now there's a real spotlight on Navarro. Even though you guys have won so many championships, do you feel a, a sort of different energy in the room now? Well, I mean, this is all new, so we didn't expect it. We didn't prepare for it. We're. Um, it seems like every since ever since the show came out, every day there's something new being thrown to us, and so we're just trying to navigate right now and and get through it. The good thing is we kind of we're a little ahead. of of ourselves prepared before we left for Christmas. So that's good because we took a week off last week to go to LA. And um, we're not, I mean, we're still focused, we're still grounded. And like I said, we're just kind of learning as we go. We want to make sure we, you know, take the opportunities that are given to us, but uh, also making sure we get, um, we fly back in time for practice. So we're, we're, we're going to make it all work. Who from the show that we saw is going to reappear uh, sort of in this next season? Because, Gabby, I know at the end of the show, you sort of decided uh, to stay in Florida and sort of spend time with your family. Jerry, you said that you're coming back. Ladarius, are, are you connected to Navarro at this time? I currently cheer at Navarro. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Um, so what is it like to be, to be back after all of this, back on the mat, back doing this all? Well, I was al I was already enrolled in Navarro like this whole like last semester and this semester. It was just a matter of, of just coming back. I just wanted to try new things, do things differently, and it was just like Monica had texted me like literally like back in November, and she was like, "Hey, you want to come do it? You still got a chance?" Because we all, all we always made this pact, like me, Jerry, and TT. If one of us come back and do a third year, then we're gonna all come back and do a oh. third year. So that's when TT was already there. And that's when I was like, you know what? TT's already there. Um, Jerry's already coming back. So you know what? I might as well make my debut there and let's just have fun. <laughs> debut? <laughs> debut? Yes. <laughs> and Gabby, what has it been like for you? So you, you now are, I know you have these cheer camps. You have this whole sort of um, career in cheerleading that you've already established. Um, what have these months been like for you since the show? So since the show came out, I've been just kind of like, you know, chilling in Florida, relaxing. Good for you. I want you to relax. <laughs> I'm like, she needs a break. Yeah, on the beach, you know, just taking my time to my, like, myself. And honestly, uh, the program I'm at right now, Top Gun All-Stars, they're amazing. Uh, I'm very appreciative of them. Uh, it's completely different from Navarro. It's All-Stars. So I've had people ask me, are you, you know, do they go against each other? I'm like, no, 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 no. So it's a completely different world. All-star and college are completely different, but it's really, really fun. And that's actually where I started cheer when I originally started. I started at Top Gun. And uh, it's just really, really cool to see all the familiar faces that I, you know, was gone away from for a while. And to go back to my roots is, it was really, really, really cool. And do you think there's a season two in the works? Would you, would you welcome the cameras back again? We're just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, I'm sure you're the point of contact for all this, I imagine. It, I mean, we, yeah, we, we love the film crew. And um, like I said, they were part of, like, like part of our family. So we would always welcome them back. And yeah, so we'll, we'll, we don't know what's going on right now, but we'll see. Everybody tweet Netflix, please. Uh, <laughs> this is a little off track, but something I, we were talking about, sort of what the cameras maybe didn't capture, and a curiosity of mine was about cheermances, or, you know, relationships <laughs> within sort of a cheerleading team, just because, you know, you're all sort of young, college-age, attractive people, and you're working together <laughs> all the time. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll speak on that. So I always encourage them to not... To not, okay. ...have relationships, just because... 
you know, we're together a lot, but it inevitably happens. So um, the it does happen. Usually every year there's at least one or two couples, and I've had a, a few get married, which is great. Oh, so, a sheer yeah, wedding. Uh-huh. I love. And uh, yeah. I had a couple, yeah, this, this past summer that got married. So um, we just make sure that we let them know that if there's any problems within the relationship, they stay outside the door when you come in. Um, I, I say this quite often. This is not your living room. When if they get too like you know touchy feely, and this is not your living room. This is practice. So I, as long as we don't know, I mean, we shouldn't see that there's a different relationship between those two people. But uh, yes, of course, it does happen. So is that maybe why we didn't see some of that on the show, or was that just not the case for this well, sort of um, group? I think my boyfriend doesn't cheer. Gotcha. <laughs> Well, outside the community, I like it. Yeah. But no, I mean, we try to keep business business inside the gym to, to practice and stuff. I mean, uh, you probably didn't notice, but there was one scene where Ashley and Sid were talking, and they, they, they date. Okay. They dated for a long time, so. Yeah. Interesting. I had to ask. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> before we go to audience Q&As, I just want to ask, there's been sort of an outpouring of support from all these different types of famous people, from Reese Witherspoon, who I could see playing you in a movie one day, um, <laughs> to Chrissy Teigen, Bad Girls Club. Um, I was wondering if you guys have been contacted through your DMs through anybody that we haven't heard of so far that has sort of wanted to reach out and connect with you. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, y'all know Snooki already. Yeah. She, <laughs> she want to do a podcast with me, so I might have to do one with her one day and just show my face and... Show them how to do it, you know? <laughs> An iconic duo I love. What about you, Gabby? Uh, his name is Skylar Adden, I think. Is his last name? He's from Pitch Perfect. Oh, Skylar Aston, yeah. Yes, Aston. And he is so sweet. I've been actually talking to him uh, over Instagram, and he's very, very down to earth, and I feel like he's kind of reached out to me, and he's almost mentoring me, and it, it's really, really nice to see, like, wow, like, somebody that's, like, actually, like, famous is, like, reaching out to me because they care that much. And he's very, very sweet, so. And we met Ben's plot last week, and he was at a... Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's actually really, really sweet, too, so it's just, like, kind of surreal. Monica, anyone for you? Uh, I've been chatting with Paula Abdul. Yeah. Oh! Oh! The audience is gagged. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Ladarius, any other ones? Um, for me, it was Kaylin Allen. I uh, got in contact with him before we went to Ellen. So, like, it was, like, a big thing for me because he, act, like, he, me and him are, like, very similar. So, it's, like, to me, I'm, like, okay. So, we're, like, twins. So, that's why. That's <laughs> yeah, I like. saw the, you guys, yeah, you guys are great on Ellen. Um, okay, we have a Twitter question for you. Uh, Maddie Lukomsky wants to know, how have you dealt with the outpouring of public recognition that ha- the show has received in such a short amount of time? Anyone can jump in here. It's honestly, uh, I think we're all still in shock, but it is the best feeling ever uh, to just know that we inspire people like that might be going through something and to just be a positive light in, you know, the whole world is just, it's such an amazing feeling. It's very, very touching. Okay, we um, are now going to go to, we have another, well, we have an audience Q&A. Okay. Hi. Hi. Get with it. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi. Um, the questions are Ladarius. Oh. Hi Queen. Hello. Hello. Um, so I want to talk about this scene in the Daytona episode. Um, I know the three of us all texted about it as soon as we saw it, but there's one incredibly emotional scene where your brother is watching you and he starts to tear up. And oh my god, I'm like choking up talking about it. Um, it was so moving and so incredible. What was that like for you watching that? And like, what has your brother thought of the show since? Uh, when I was watching that, I was very like, I was taken aback because how we grew up, like we really didn't have like emotion, like you don't like Antonio didn't really show emotion. So seeing that in the show, and I did not even know that he was watching me compete. So it was like it kind of like shook me, and I was like, oh, so he's watching, and seeing him cry. It made me cry because I was with a lot of my family, like my cheer dad, Jordan, and all of them, and we were just sitting there, and I was just like. He's really crying, like he's watching me. Like this moment I've been waiting for for so long and like I finally got my brother and them on like to watch, I'm not gonna cry, but I got them to finally watch me because I watched them their entire life due to things that they love. But 
they finally got a chance to watch me, and it like felt good because I felt like I was finally seen. You deserve everything great. Thank you so, so much. Yes. I'm glad the show has been sort of restorative in different ways, and the lessons that you've taken away have impacted you and also those around you. It's so beautiful. Um, we have another question. Hi, welcome to New York. Um, I was wondering if there are mistakes you can make during your routine that wouldn't necessarily take points of a point uh, the score sheet. That would would that wouldn't. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, the thing about it is, is there's probably we always say, you know, prepare for the unexpected, and because it's not always going to be the right grip, it's not always going to be whatever, but we try to keep going to where y'all maybe wouldn't notice the mistake, yes. but we always can analyze ourselves to pieces and know what someone did wrong or could do better. Um, and I mean, it's, it, usually the, the points taken off is if you touch down like in your tumbling, if you touch down in the ground, um, but you could always not do your best, but not necessarily have a deduction. Um, the stunt may not look great, but not have a deduction. So it would actually have to come down um, or touch down in your tumbling, or do y'all want to add to that? Um, you can, like, miss a motion, and you won't get a deduction. Yeah. Like, you can, like, little stuff like that. Yeah. Or, like, if you don't, like, if you, like, balk in a tumbling pass, which means, like, basically if you, like, throw a tuck instead of, like, doing a whip full, like, you do, like, a whip tuck, you won't necessarily get a deduction yeah. for it, but... You don't get your difficulty points. Right. Yeah. You don't get yeah. difficulty points. Literius, I love seeing you as a teacher at, at the end of the show. And <laughs> it was so sort of moving to see, like, the lessons maybe that Monica has shown you and you impart to the next generation. Monica, what was that like to see Ladarius in that mode? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't surprised at all because, you know, Ladarius is Ladarius. He, he's very vocal. And, uh, you know, he's got... He likes for his energy to be matched, and he wants you to step up to his level, and kind of that's his expectation. So, um, but Darius is awesome. We've been we've been working on his, um, <laughs> you know, m maybe not everybody takes the same kind of criticism. So, like, mm -hmm. just maybe a little more gentle over here, or whatever. But, uh, but uh, he definitely likes it to be tough on him, and mm -hmm. he, he likes for him for us to be tough on him. And I think he likes to have everyone step up to his expectation. But he's he's amazing. And he's going to be an amazing coach if that's what he decides to do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, we have one more question for you. Um, so our team is actually going to Daytona this year for nationals. Hi. Oh! Hey! Um, so we wanted to know how you guys stay motivated, like, heading into the competition. We cheer each other on when we're, like, doing stunts. We make sure everybody is included in our entire, like, circle. Like, you know, everybody, like, congregates. And we talk to everybody. We make sure we tell everybody that we love them. And even whether you have the smallest issue or the biggest issue, you hug that person and you let them know, I got you if you got me. And that's like how, that's how we are so close and stuff. Because I know all of us have argued with each other up here on the stage, even including the coach. But <laughs> we know where our heart is. Know where your heart is. Know how to talk to each other, how to work together, how to know whatever is going on out there is not bigger than what we have to do out there on the floor at Daytona. I think we could all use a little bit of that advice. Thank you. Um, we have to let you go, unfortunately, but everyone make sure to watch Cheer on Netflix. Rewatch it if you haven't seen it again. Yeah. And give it up for Monica, Gabby, Gary, and Ladarius.